Hey everybody, welcome back to Tavern Talks. I'm your wonderful barkeeper and lore master. Tonight we have another interview and as you can see we've also changed our logo. Now that is just kind of a glimpse on what is coming in the near future as we are going to be redoing the entirety of the layout here in the next couple weeks. Uh, but tonight we have Chris Hama, otherwise known as Hama Samakun, over on Twitch, TikTok, all those crazy channels and things uh, but he has done some pretty cool things in the TTRPG space and I figured I'd bring him on here and find his story out so that's why he's here tonight so Chris if you want to just kind of introduce yourself tell us where they can find you that kind of fun stuff absolutely uh, I am Chris or Hamasamakun that's H-A-M-A-S-A-M-A-K-U-N on all social media platforms uh, I do a lot of like D&D &D memes uh, I've been also doing a handful of projects that sort of work on diversity and, and um, sort of getting marginalized groups of voices out there in this space and also a lot of like superhero related content uh, when it comes to TTRPGs though I've been just trying to like veer away towards D&D &D and more into like a lot of these indie RPGs which I've found a lot of like interest in lately. Awesome. Yeah, that's going to be a really good topic then, too, because I've kind of been doing the same thing. Like, I like D&D. &D. I've been playing D&D &D for way too many years. And now I'm looking at all the other weird, different, you know, other types of TTRPGs out there. Yeah. I'm dabbling in Power Rangers, which I know you have a, a, a thing <laughs> in. So um, I'm also dabbling in Candela Obscura and uh, there's a couple other... I'm looking into maybe playing or running a small set for werewolves. So I'm just kind of jumping around here and there. Nice. So, yeah. So what is going on over there? So in the TTRPG space, you said you're kind of breaking out into the outside of the, the high fantasy D&D. &D. So what, are you, what do you got going on right now? Uh, well, I've been doing a lot of like deconstructions of like character archetypes, which is a lot of my short form content. I'll do things that are less traditional in the sense that like, oh, the paladin that is like this stoic, like hero to, to the common man. Like the only reason they're quiet is because they just don't speak common or something like that. Uh, <laughs> in terms of like the actual games, I guess, I've mm -hmm. been doing a lot less high fantasy and more in the realms of like steampunk. Though lately I've done something that's a little more contemporary. Okay. Uh, I have a project in the works called Content Writer, which is based off of, um, well, the common writer like show Tokusatsu stuff from Japan. Okay. Which is this like masked heroes fighting uh, costume villains, mm -hmm. um, and that entire thing is set in a world where like these monster attacks are being streamed directly to Twitch. So it's this huge like, uh, I don't know if it's like it's sort of a commentary on like the content creator space in general. Uh, I can see Ark in the chat. Ark is honestly the first is actually the first person who's going to be on that as we've been slowly developing it over time, but that's been really a majority of my projects, at least in terms of like breaking out from like traditional TTRPGs. Uh, I've also actually learned uh, City of Mist uh, for my tabletop Tempest game, which is mm -hmm. uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I think the mechanics of which lend itself more towards like narrative world building as opposed to like mechanical world building which i think is really interesting okay yeah that is interesting maybe we'll break out into that for a moment because i've not i've not played city of mist yet so i've got a couple friends that have talked about it and that they've played it over the time but it's definitely not something that i've dabbled in so what what do you like about uh, city of mist um i would say my it's i hmm. it's hard to describe really but it's very different from D, D, I guess where that's a very much like you versus them kind of game or at least that's how it mm -hmm. tends to be played uh with this one everyone has this sort of dm hat and they can wear it every so often uh they have a lot of moves that lend themselves to being more re reactive to what your players are doing mm -hmm. as opposed to you leading the story they'll tend to like you'll set up the mystery they'll sort of uh walk through it 
but mm -hmm. it's ultimately up to the group as a whole as to where that story is going to go. Obviously, you can throw like pitfalls and stuff, but they do have these like uh, abilities here and there that give them the sort of the sort of ability to hold the reins and, and guide the story where they want it to go, which I always thought was really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, which is also a big part of why I love the mass TTRPGs. Uh, TTRPG, which um, gives you the moment of truth, which basically lets you DM for like a minute, and I've always thought that was really interesting and very rewarding as a player, and offers a lot less pressure for the DM, I think. Right, yeah. Uh, so, I've not played that one either. So, I mean, these two, both of these games, I've not even touched. I don't have books, or I haven't even really heard much about Mask at all. I've, I'm, I know it's out there, but like, I've never actually picked up a book or seen anybody play it, so... But what is so you've played Mask, and then there's a new one out there just right now that uh, a guy named Jeff uh, Forbeck, who I met at GaryCon, is building the Marvel TTRPG. Have you? If I was curious if you played both, because I want to know what's the difference. I have not played both. No. Okay. I I was not even aware of it until uh, you just said it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's interesting then, because like I said, Mask kind of being this, the way we were talking about it, it sounds almost like uh, my hero type feel or, you know, uh, superhero type setup, but I know you're also putting that high spin on it of being very anime based, kind of, yeah, so. I, when it comes to Mask, I think it's very much a deconstruction i guess of like the hero genre because rather than like ooh, you're superman or ooh, you're like batman it kind of narrows it down to like key elements of the story like what you what you are as opposed mm -hmm. to who you are i think okay that makes sense uh where you'll be sort of like shuffled into these various playbooks that are all based off of archetypes within the genre so you have like the beacon and that's basically like your dick grayson your robin uh, okay. characters that don't have powers of their own but use like gadgets and their wits and they are essentially these beacons to the rest of humanity as like hey you know this is what being a hero is all about uh, versus like others where there's like the transformed which is uh like the hulk or the nova which is more closer to like a superman kind of okay interesting yeah so um so what kind of characters are being ran through that one uh through the master RPG? yeah like what player because like, are you playing it or are you running it uh so bef a lot of my experience with it comes from playing it so i was on uh this actual play heroes of bastion it was run by alec the bard uh one of my favorite shows that i've been on uh where it was very like teen titans-esque so i got mm -hmm. a lot of my information from that because i was playing the beacon and i've been dabbling in a lot of in a handful of other playbooks uh but what sort of forced me to like learn more about it over time is actually the content writers thing, which is what uh, I'm I'm running it in the mass system because it it has a lot of elements from like anime and and superhero uh, media that I think translates really well. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean nice. lately it's it's more running it than playing it. I think. Awesome. What kind of story are you telling right now? Uh, well, the intention is, as I mentioned previous, was yeah. uh, it's all set in this world that is that where monster attacks are are very common. They are streamed directly to a streaming platform, uh, being run by this like faceless conglomerate known as Utopia. Uh, the, the, the 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 synopsis more or less boils down to a world that was plagued by monster attacks until eventually a company stepped up and started. Uh, forcing those monsters back with like incredibly powerful military technology and experiments and what have you until eventually that all became very commonplace and the focus shifted from military might more towards personal defense and as that slowly became like as that sort of died down and the need for uh you know various armies um sort of dwindled into just being like hey there's a monster attack every like other saturday uh, it became more of an entertainment <laughs> thing where now people can make a career off of going out and opting in and fighting these monsters and they can get support from their chat, uh, which is like a big part of it where a lot of these other uh, 
actual plays that I've seen that kind of interact with the chat have that degree of separation where it's like, this world is like, this is its own thing. Like, we, we have right. this wall where you can donate to, like, make an NPC happen, but, like, we will never directly talk to you uh, as our characters. And right. that's an element of this story that I think is really neat because... Oh yeah. Whoever whoever I have on can essentially talk directly as their characters to the chat because the people oh. watching the stream exist within the narrative of the stream. So it's a lot awesome. of Awesome. And uh, it's also been really interesting because uh, I've had people from my chat who've been paying to support this and like, you know, helping me out. Uh, they all have their own characters that can essentially cameo in the show and a lot of them have actually sort of taken on like roles within the narrative as like the villains or like this entire other team of like quote unquote content creators they go by content writers but basically it was this huge deconstruction of like the content creator space as opposed to like you know people going out there for just to just to be famous or whatever right. this was like there's an active role of like it's very similar to the boys i think in a sense where it's a deconstruction of like the superheroes as a form of entertainment as opposed right. to like your saviors but it there's that sort of like bridge between the two that i think i really want to explore when it finally gets going i really think it's neat though that you have this blend between that actually brings the audience in real time and, and it connects directly to it because like you said a lot of times even when you're playing dungeon and dragons or you're playing any of these other games like oh you can donate to give the players this or you can give the players that but never do the players really as the character themselves interact with that audience that's a really cool spin that you definitely have in all honesty marketed there because i've never heard of that idea so and i'm not going to take it <laughs> it's a great idea though like perfect idea. copyright hamasama uh, 2024. there you go right there and now it's on my show so i can't like pull it. <laughs> so yeah but uh no so arclight's got some couple questions here that i don't know some of these uh, so there's some inside knowledge here that i'm not sure of but what is content writers deep dive what is the project about so content writers was that entire spiel oh okay that's it okay is, got it <laughs> no yeah it's, it, it, i mean it's based off of, it is a it is so arc it works on it with me uh and oh, okay it's actually our love letter to tokusatsu shows which are these like japanese superhero you know fight the costume monster every other sunday and then like yeah. throw him off a cliff and he blows up uh but it's been really interesting because as we've sort of moved into the modern age those like those heroes have to sort of evolve with the culture so mm -hmm. it's kind of veered away from that traditional like we are all like we're just a costume bug man fighting a monster and now it's like a deep dive of the concept of power or or some are deconstructing the idea of like what a desire or what a wish is but right. something that uh the reason we take inspiration from that as opposed to something like superman or or power rangers uh is this indomitable like spirit of good that is present throughout each of these like common writers mm -hmm. so in the original show they are essentially all people who they are people who at their heart defend like justice and love in the world and uh, i've always thought that like idea of being a and i'm gonna take from arc's branding here but being a beacon to the world and being this sort of light in the darkness has always been much more appealing to me than running a superhero show that's about so, like some costume hero beating the crap out of this guy for the fifth time today and then, right like, oh, he has to tr tackle with like why he's this evil or like it, it has never really been appealing to me when it comes to like dark and gritty uh superheroes in general like i've, I've never been the biggest fan of those sorts of things right I mean, obviously there are some people who do it well but on the whole i'm like i would much prefer my heroes to be like bright and flashy and like positive and more superman than batman i think Nice. No, I like that. Really, I think it's an interesting concept of being able to not only have this, not the the elements behind the system is definitely a cool idea because now you're not just dealing with the bad guy of the week type stuff, right? Like there's actually this idea that we are trying to bring good back to the world, which, you know, I think a lot of times we, we definitely need that more and more nowadays because it seems to be that issue. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's great. I love that. Uh, let's see. Uh, next question: How does moving from being a guest character to a full time character in a campaign feel? <laughs> this is also very arc light centered. Uh, oh yeah, no, I, I I I have a feeling I know where this one is completely. So <laughs> it was really interesting, mostly because I get brought on 
primarily to guests in a handful. Like, recently I've been in, like, one-shots. I am in, like, a mini-series for another, uh, like, uh, channel. I think it's, uh, Magi RPG, and that's, like, just a sort of small mini-series. But, like, being sort of taken in as a guest character at first, and the details of which is I was brought in for Arclight's game, Arcanites, as, like, the Phantom Ranger. I was here to just cause chaos. I was here to, like, make Alex life a living hell, who was one of the players. I was just there to be a general nuisance, and then all of a sudden, like, I, I enjoyed playing the game so much that, you know, as a joke, I'm like, oh, you know, Ark, I'm never leaving. And then, like, as the episodes progressed, I kept having more things to do, so I'm like, I... Guess I'm like, not leaving. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I just live here now. Like, I don't, like, am I going at any point? And, uh, not that I ever had any intention of leaving, but... Eventually, I essentially was brought in as like a permanent member of the cast, and right. showing up every week. And I always, I, I think it was really interesting because eventually, essentially, I had to full pivot my character from being like, oh, this is funny in small amounts, to like, oh, I actually have to like be part of the story now. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a plot point anymore. I'm just here to like actually do things. And I think Ark is a phenomenal storyteller because mm. they took like the loose parts of my backstory and made it into like something that actually makes sense and i'm just standing here like wow my joke character is really sad now thanks a lot for that <laughs> yeah no it, it i like I said i've watched a couple episodes here and there and i think the first episode i watched you were like just coming on mm -hmm. and it seemed like you you had definitely this plan that you were going to just cause absolute chaos to the world and then I popped on a couple weeks ago, and I was like, he, he's still a... What? what? I'm still he's, here. He hasn't left, which is great, because uh, the last one before that, I think you were combining with the Dragon Zord at the time when I logged in. Something like that? I, I was just like, what is going on? Things. Some Cheshire cat, Dragon Zord mix? It was the best. Having a Zord <laughs> in that game is the best feeling. But yeah, yeah I, was, I was literally just doing things like arc would give me a like a, a set list of things i was supposed to do and then i would accomplish them but they didn't give me direction as to how i was supposed to accomplish them so i would just do things and like somehow they would always work out and i'm just like i'm a god i am i am invincible here uh so i would just like <laughs> run around and like start i i had like a long running bit in that game where i would like teleport steal something from the enemy and then come back or like I would steal something from the main characters and then I'd come back or I would like go get food in the middle of a battle just because like I have no stake in this like from right. my character's perspective they had essentially been through centuries millennia infinite like time of seeing this same group of people fail so right. like at this point he's just like I'm just here for the ride like I've had this <laughs> mission like for basically longer than any of you have been alive and i have seen no evidence that you are any better than the last time yeah. i did this you're not gonna like, like this is just uh i don't know what to do at this point like you're like <laughs> i'm gonna get i'm gonna go i'm gonna go get some takeout i'll be back in a couple hours <laughs> like, pretty much it, it was so fun and i think uh arc had arc is has a very specific talent uh that i don't think a lot of gms have which is being able to wrangle in my bullshit <laughs> uh, where like I will do something and I'll be like haha curveball and then Ark will be like ha but that was actually part of my plan I'm like all right oh well, my God. <laughs> like you I swear every time but yeah not I have a couple I have a couple players like that in my Monday night game same issue they're just like let me throw this massive curveball at somebody because I was like oh um yeah, so we were playing. My elements is jacked up. I apologize for people. This isn't my. This is my show, but my tech guy is out on <laughs> on, on hiatus this week, and I don't. I can't log into uh, stream elements at the moment. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So yeah, interesting because the last time I let this shenanigans just disappear, uh, my one player came back with a uh, pla not plastic uh, rubber unicorn head. On. And I was like, wow, this is when shenanigans just goes through the roof. That's now, it was a great story, mind you, but it was a moment to have to, like, get the bearing back and try to figure out how to react on everything. <laughs> Amazing narrative. No idea what's going on here. but <laughs> Yeah. So um, they're playing it. We're playing in an Icewind Dale adventure on Gen Con's channel on Monday nights. And they were getting ready to, they're trying to make money at a bar. 
and all the players are going out trying to do all these little pockets to bring people to the bar. And he goes, and our goblin was like, I'm going to cast Mask of Many Faces. I am the size of a goblin. I have the body of a human, but I have a horse head. And then he put it on on stream. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I can't. I was like, give me a second. <laughs> like I, on stream, I was like, <laughs> hold. And the I, entire cast lost it. And I was like, I, 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 give me a moment. Let me figure out how this is going to go down. But so yeah, phenomenal. so... Mind you, it worked out fairly well, really well for them. They made a ton of money out of this, out of this bar, but or out of this inn. But still, it's a great time. It's good times with shenanigans. Uh, shenanigans are fun. They really are in, in games, and they make some really crazy and off the wall, but very memorable stories. So, good on you, Ark, because you can control his shenanigans. I've never <laughs> had the opportunity yet. I'll hopefully in the near future. So, the third question. What projects from Tabletop Tempest are you most excited for? Now that's kind of rude because I mean that's all of them probably. <laughs> that is very true. Um, I don't, I don't know how much I'm like actually allowed to say about it. Uh, a lot of, like we have a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, and I've been super excited about all the actual plays uh, that are like being produced. Like you got mine, you got Chris's, and then eventually Jonathan's will start recording at some point. Uh, but each of these individual stories, I think, are very personal. I think um, there is a lot of our own, like, genuine experiences, uh, or rather, like, our own authentic experiences that come with being the people we are in the, pe in the space that we are oh, that nice. sort of lend themselves to very interesting storytelling and each of our casts were like very carefully picked from like a, a lot of applicants because a lot of people share those same sentiments of wanting to get their voices heard and like wanting to carve out a space for themselves in mm -hmm. the community when there might not always be a place at the table and um something really important about tabletop tempest is uh our sort of like i don't want to say slogan because that feels too corporate but it's this idea that like you know if you're at our table or if i think it's if you're at our table either all of us eat or none of us do or something along those lines it's been a hot minute since i've actually checked but uh the sentiment is is sort of what's important that like you know if, if you're if you are like with us if you're part of us if you're like you know sort of if your interests and like and your values align with ours then we are going to make sure we're going to take care of each other and like we want to make sure that everyone is quote unquote eating at this table um, as opposed to a lot of other sentiments you find in the space where it's like, hey, it's either I eat or you do, and I'm always going to choose myself, where it's like, that's just something that we never really agreed with. Yeah, no, I don't, I completely agree more with your setup than mine, uh, than, than that one, because that one sounds horrible. Uh, and really, in all honesty, I, I think it, it needs to be that way, especially on a collaborative world like we do in the T TTRPG community, where, you know, if I'm eating, everybody needs to eat, because there's no reason... This can't be done. As I tell people all the time, this this is not a one man show. It never it can't be. It's impossible. So it's one of those things where you have to represent. You have to give that. What word am I looking for? But like representation for everybody in the group rather than just yeah. one person. Absolutely. Um, I think it's. I think it's a lot of deconstructing the mentality when it comes to like what is essentially gone from a hobby industry to an entertainment industry where just this is this is something that i deconstructed on one of my streams and a handful of people in the chat are from my twitch and they probably kind of remember this but uh it's a lot of deconstructing that idea that somebody else gaining an opportunity is not you losing an opportunity that Correct. is just them gaining an opportunity and you know if you put positive energy into the world if you help out your friends if you like make sure that you are genuinely in it for the right reasons then like those opportunities will always find themselves uh, like they'll find a way back to you oh yeah what, like, out here and also something i don't think a lot of people understand about the content creation space is that attention is not a finite resource the only place it's sort of is on twitch where like you need concurrent viewers but when it comes to things like youtube tiktok or like instagram other people gaining like followers or what have you does not detract from your content like no you are your own island and people are free to visit that island whenever they wish and it's 
you cannot run out of people's attention. Obviously, you can become less relevant and people can stop caring about your content, but that's not other that's not anyone's fault but your own. But that's 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 the shortened uh No, I No, I completely agree. 100%. And that's why one of the things that uh I like to do here at least in the tavern, is to allow other people to have their voice. You know, I try to bring a new guest every week so that people can talk about things that really they care about in the TTRPG community space. Um, I'm going to ask a question. You can tell me immediately, like, nope, we can't talk about that. Can you at least tell me what systems you're playing in Tabletop Tempest? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll be real with you. I'm, not, I'm like, these are not, these are... These are not my questions. <laughs> yeah, these are these are very much not my questions. If you bring on all of Tabletop Tempest, they can make more informed decisions. Yeah. But like at the very least, I think in the casting calls they said what system they're using. Okay. I want the very least say that so that nobody else gets in trouble. Mine's is using City of Mist. That that should okay. be obvious enough. Uh, that is that is the system I have chosen. Nice. Um. Uh, oh, so. One, because we're I'm still grabbing questions throughout the chat room, which I love this because normally I don't get a ton of chat questions, but we've got That's some pretty be. awesome people in here tonight. Uh, uh, in what ways do you see yourself as a GM and as a player? I this is that this, these are another one of these deep we love deep questions from Ark. Making me think about things. <laughs> it is it is nine thirty. I am fending off a deep sickness, and I am doing the best I can. Um, I think as a player, I view myself as very, like, committed to the bit, whether or not people find that to have a negative connotation or not. Uh, I will bring my all to whatever it is we are doing, if that is what's being asked of me. Uh, though more often than not, I, you know, tend to be there for comic relief with a sense of heart and, and authenticity to it. There is a, there is always going to be a reason for humor. Whether or not mm -hmm. you explore that reason is is something that I don't think a lot of people think about. Uh, for one of my characters, it was very much a bit character. It was it was essentially like a self insert of me being like, ah, oh, this would be so cool to have superpowers, and like I would make jokes and all that. But uh, you'd slowly like uncover as the game went on that this was all sort of a front to like a deep like fear of like not being like of not having anyone's attention of being like forgotten mm -hmm. in a different sense, where it is very much a coping mechanism. And being able to explore that in certain games has been really, really cool. Uh, in terms of being a GM, I tend to lean more towards like storytelling and narrative and role play above all else. I'm not like a crunchy, like mechanics heavy DM. Like I don't care if you're if you created a build that can like strike with the force of the sun. <laughs> like I just care that your character has like a good backstory and like NPCs <laughs> can draw from and like we can have this good back and forth. If right. your character is as is as dull as bricks and like can hit really hard, cool, probably not the DM for you. I'm right. I don't I have no interest in doing like a, a a meat grinder like, hey, go down into this dungeon, fight fifty goblins and then come back up. This one is like, hey, did you know that that goblin you killed had a family? Time for us to explore that. <laughs> Let's go down that rabbit hole and see how, they, how you feel at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's that's very much what I see myself in terms of being a player. Yeah. Uh, I, it's interesting. Uh, sorry if I interrupted you, no, no. but it's definitely something that I've noticed in the new TTRPG space. Like growing up and playing old school, yeah, that was very the commonality. In the newer TTRPG space, a lot of times the story definitely trumps everything. Um, and I don't think that's a problem. Uh, I just think that the game has now shifted and changed. And now with new forms of TTRPGs outside of the crunchiness of Dungeons and Dragons or um, Pathfinder, those types of games, what I would call TT or you know RPG light games, where the rules are very very minimal. I think those are the ones where you're really finding these heavy, heavy stories being grown out of them because that's all there is, you know. Um, I would definitely agree. I think that's been a lot of my issue and why I haven't really played a whole lot of D&D lately is just because the system has not grown with its audience. I think D&D is still very much in the sense of like a very binary success or pass fail system. Mm -hmm. It's very like technic, like like rule heavy and and mechanic heavy. And while like 
while you could absolutely get away running a lot of these very story intensive games using that system, I find that more often than not, it sort of stands in the way of it. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll have this really intense character moment and somebody will say something that like, you know for a fact, like, you know, rally the troops, but then their, their persuasion check is like a two. And it's like, well, right. I don't know yeah, why you kind of, bothered. even if you're trying to be nice about it and you're like, oh, roll with advantage, even then the dice are still the problem, right? Like, they still fight the, the story sometimes. Yeah. And I'm um, absolutely here for like the dice sort of leading the story. And like, you could always have these really interesting, uh, like, twists and turns, but mm -hmm. it's one of those things where like, after a certain point, the narrative needs to take precedent. And I think a lot of these newer TTRPGs that have more fast and loose uh, rulings and, and sort of degrees of success uh, lend themselves to being more for the audience that has sort of amassed post-critical role and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Dimension 20 and what have you. Right. No, and I think it's interesting because that that's a good con that's a good like tie into that, right? Is that Critical Role is, is based around this story of, and I think one thing that they do very well that you don't see as much when we have those conversations is when they do decide to go on these very deep moments, the dice are kind of pulled away. Um, or the dice are rolled first and then the players are reacting to what that dice would feel like. Um, and I think that's really the only way you could do it so that the story continues to be told properly without it feeling like that has now ruined a moment of, of greatness, right? Yeah. Because um, like you could say, oh, you know, we're walking in here, we're gonna have this conversation. I'm about to talk to the, the matriarch of the city about asking these things. And before you even start that conversation, I'm gonna have you roll. And then, if this is how we've talked before, because I would never do this with new players who have no idea how to fully roleplay properly like that. But for people, especially in a stream setting or in a large setting where they want to be very adamant on both, um, roll first, you know, and then play your character as if how they would be if they did get a bad roll. Um, that way the story still sounds like it's you telling it instead of me retracting or like re... Uh, retconning this because you had a horrible role. It's just an idea. Um, uh, let's see. A couple other new questions. Let's see what we get. What we get. Uh, would you consider being a player in a DD and d campaign a legitimate form of acting? I would say yeah. Uh, at, this, when I... at this point, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, by this point, absolutely. Uh, I got my start playing this in like high school, and one of the ways I convinced somebody to play D and D with me was uh, being like, "Oh yeah, it's just like a like a free form improv acting exercise." And then they just they joined in, and we told this entire story, and it was great. Uh, but I would absolutely think that um, I would absolutely say that like acting is like D and D is very much acting. It's it's kind of keeping yourself on your toes it's not quite the same as like on screen acting or theater mm -hmm. acting but it is it lends itself to that sort of improvish like oh yeah being able to come up with lines and dramatic scenes that sometimes are better than things that have been written out and it's that spontaneity of it that i think keeps the medium alive yeah and so here's a good question as a game master what do you do to prepare your your NPCs so that it feels that naturalness in the shift between them. Man, that is that is a good question. I because I'm I'm the same way where it's like some days I'm on the ball and I can you know tell this dramatic story with an NPC based on the reactions that my players are giving. But what have you put in play to be like, okay, this this character knows these couple things, or are you completely off like? fly from the seat of your pants type game master <laughs> which both are perfectly fine i know many that do both i so i tend to be very fly by the seat of my pants like i know what information the players need to know and generally speaking most npcs the ones that they think are relevant enough to ask about it tend to know the information uh i found that keeping my plans very fast and loose and like making sure that they get to where they need to be without having to worry about oh the only person who knows this thing is 30 miles that way and like we have our quest over here so it's less it's less logistics on their part and more just 
the story will 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 flow where it needs to mm -hmm. and when it comes to like having the story being told via npcs i tend to tell mine more towards like the villains which they have to confront or just having them be the ones to lead it mm -hmm. uh, more often than not i'll like retool some of my plans if something they think of makes more sense so I'll, like excellent it, it varies um let's see uh are do you believe that dungeons and dragons is, I, I think we've already tapped onto this one is do you believe the rules are too strict now um i think personally for me it's one of those things where if the story is going to trump the rules i'm willing to sway it uh, but I do think rules are placed in for a reason too, so that people aren't going over and above. Um, the main thing I will tell people a lot of times is that I see this a lot, is that people go and they want to play Batman at, you know, in Dungeons and Dragons, or they want to play these superheroes in Dungeons and Dragons, but they want to play them starting off at level one. And I'm like, mm, you got to kind of take that humble beginning and kind of build the character up. Uh, and sometimes, and many times I would say, they're going to find a better storied character and a better rounded character than you would just being like, I'm Batman now. <laughs> like, to me. That's personal. Um, but I, I play most of my games at level one because I want people to experience those understandings of what the character is growing and how they're building their their story. Um, so, But like I said, I have never played City of Mist and I've yet to play... Uh, Power Rangers, though, that is coming up very soon for a very small... I, I did a giveaway when Ark was on here last month, uh, where if we hit so many followers and so many um, subscriptions, I would run a giveaway on Instagram, and six of our or four of our players were picked from that giveaway, and they're going to do a one-shot with me behind the scenes, so get to oh, yeah. try out the Power Rangers TTRPG for a couple, couple people, and... That will actually be the first RPG that my son will play in. He's nine years old. So. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And apparently my players <laughs> all want him to be the uh, the leader, so he is playing the Red Ranger. I'm here for it. I support yeah. him. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. absolutely should be the, the leader. Yep, it's going to be great. Can't, can't wait. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, what's up, Northwall? See you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be on the, so so just a heads up and i'm gonna shout this out real fast since he's in here is uh i will be playing on north wolf's channels or on twisted fate's channel next tomorrow uh for candela obscura so come check us out tomorrow uh yeah exciting like promos for that there's a bunch of promos going on for that one and there's some serious serious work put into this one i'm telling you they, oh, yeah. they the entire cast has done some uh incredible things uh, let's see here. How do you generally nudge those kinds of players who want to be Batman from level one to a more humble beginning? Uh, I'll let you take that one. How would you do it? Personally, I this is also why I tend to do more of like the indie R TTRPGs because <laughs> you can create a fully realized character with all the abilities you need from the get go, as opposed to like leveling up into it. But right. if you are, you know, if you're if you're subscribed to doing D and D and you have to do D and D then I would say the best way to sort of nudge them in the right direction is honestly just making it all relative. If they want to be Batman from the get-go, give them challenges that are befitting of Batman from the get-go. You don't have a level one Batman like going up against like a pack of rats. Like, right. I know that's a level one thing, but I think that's how I've done in a lot of my games where some characters are like, fallen gods from level one or like famed demon hunters right and so you retool certain characters or villains to be towards level one as opposed to gearing them towards higher levels um, i like it which has been a, a lot way. of my strategy with uh this other project that i do which is hot asian dnd it is a asian inspired dnd podcast uh i hadn't mentioned that previous because we're on a bit of a hiatus but we've been slowly getting episodes uh put together awesome. but uh, that's very similar. Uh, we started from like I believe it was level one, and have been telling the story. And they have a lot of these like various, these a lot of very interesting backstory elements that lend them sort of more to higher level. Uh, but for this one specifically, it is I've, I've sort of like tooled the world around them. They're still fighting gods and like you know doing all these like very epic story beats that are taken directly from uh, 
certain like Asian folklore and such, but uh, they are still very much like level three, level four, and I'm like, well, uh, we will. This is any any one of these could be a lethal in like either lethal interaction, but it's based on how you decide to go about it. Nice. Like, you got to be smart about it, or else you will be steamrolled. And I think that's also <laughs> something really interesting. Uh, for hot Asian D&D specifically, because uh, we lend ourselves more to, like, the... I don't want to say, like, a patent-pending, like, Asian version of storytelling, but when it comes to a lot of the folklore, it's very based around being polite or understanding or empathy as opposed to, like, hey, remember that time that, like, Gilgamesh beat the crap out of that dragon? Wow, isn't he so cool for that? Uh, versus in a story like this, where it's being told very much like... Under understanding that nobody is truly the villain... That everything is a very careful balance and um, to maintain that balance you have to express a level of empathy towards your enemy and try to show them a better way as opposed to just executing them right there on the, on the spot and I think that's been really interesting to explore and I've mentioned to my cast a bunch of times that it's just been very rewarding to run a game that is more interaction and like role play and politic heavy than just watching them flex their abilities and kill a man in two hits yeah no that's i mean those are big ones there's there's some rpgs out there that i mean that that's the premise of them right like if you've ever played call of cthulhu you don't run you don't steamroll anything in that game like everything kills you very easily uh so um but yeah no these are great uh these are great pointers for people that are just getting into the space as well um now, when you're playing your games, and I'm curious on this because you, you've mentioned, you know, I start people out this this level, or I do a lot of indie games. Now, your indie games, are you are you playing long term, or are we playing like couple week, couple sessions, and then kind of ending the story and then moving on? Uh, as of late, it's been a, a lot of guesting on like streams and stuff. I don't have a whole lot of home games. Uh, right. Longest running has been Hot Asian D and D. How long has that been going? It's been about a year, I think. Nice. Uh, we took a handful of breaks here and there, but we've been like working on the whole project for like a decent amount of time. Excellent. Uh, but when it comes to indie RPGs, I'll usually guest on things, so it's like one or two sessions. Sometimes I'll be on it for a mini series. Uh, me myself, other than content writer, I lend myself more to like the eight session run like story, just so it doesn't feel like we're just dragging on. Um, but. That, that's generally my opinion on that and like also a lot of like actual plays in general of like I think you can tell the same like story with eight episodes than you could with 80 and yeah and there's there's a lot of people it's it's just very difficult to tell those long stories yeah because you've got to think way farther around the or like I said the way you can do it of course is you know you do eight eight episodes leave room for a cliffhanger and then you build another eight episodes that you can tie things in of course. Um, and then it's kind of like chapters at that point, which I think is really, in my opinion, what Critical Role does without ex saying that, because you can see a beginning, middle, and an end to most stories, and then they've got like two episodes of relax time, and then they go back into that big story. Yeah, again. they have arcs as so, opposed to just one long thing. Right. And I think that's just more of a, that's how they, you know, let's just keep calling it the extra, you know, the... Let's just put another number next to it. But in the all, in all honesty, if you look at season one, you know they have arcs of all different types there. So I mean, you got four or five arcs. So definitely, definitely an idea. Yeah, chapters is so much easier. I agree. Um, which I might have to start doing more often because <laughs> I feel like I I do long term very often. But I do. I still, without saying it's long term. It's just those chapters just flow very quickly into another chapter and yeah. keep moving. Uh, Understandable. Uh, let's see here. Do you feel like it would be difficult for new players to just jump into a level 10 character? Is there no way for someone just to jump into a D&D type game with some of the bells and whistles? Um, for me personally, I think if we're going to jump into a level 10 character... It's going to take a lot more... Let me rephrase that. If it's a one-shot and you want to jump into a level 10 character and just beeline, have a good time, let's do it. Um, you don't need much of a story time, a storyline group for that because you're doing a one-shot. You can put some backstory into it, but really it's not going to be a big deal. But if you're jumping into a level 10 start of a campaign and you're wanting to do 6, 8, 12 episodes, um, 
a lot of that, in my opinion, is going to put a little bit more work on the players because you're going to need those deeper backstories before things even started because otherwise, what are we rallying 10, you know, 6, 7, level 10 characters together for that and how are they going to mesh? So, you know, that's my own personal opinion on it. Thankfully, we have TTRPGs that, or not TTRPGs, we have tools like Foundry, Roll20 that make the mechanical portion of it a lot easier, which makes then you being able to tell the story easier. Yeah. Um, anything you would like to add to that? Honestly, you put it pretty succinctly. Uh, when I first started playing D&D, uh, I was actually, so the first game I ever played of D&D was as the DM for a game of 11 people. Uh, hey, me too. <laughs> it was it was rough, and then we jumped into more games, and we just kept playing, and we never learned the rules. Um, I think it depends on the player. Some people learn better by knowing or by like actively playing it and having people correct them, as opposed to people who learn who read the system, learn everything they need to learn, and then jump in and play. Uh, I myself I'm am very much a like. I would love to just play in a one shot, and if I do it wrong, people tell me. Yep. And now I know how to play the game, which is exactly how I learned City of Mist. I would have, I had somebody in my game correct me on some of the stuff I was getting wrong, and I'm like, thank you. I have no idea how this system works. That's why we have this. But right. now I'm a little more comfortable running the game and like kind of getting people to uh, partake, I guess. So this 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 brings into an interesting question. I'm just going to throw this one out there. I have a book in my hand that I want to learn how to play, and I don't know anybody that's playing it. I have never played this. Yes. So Werewolf the Apocalypse is a Renegades system as well. So as you know, the Power Rangers does is from Renegade as well. So uh, they adopted White Wolf's World of Darkness series, and uh, I've never played Werewolf. I played Vampire before, but I've never played Werewolf. Um, <laughs> Oh, let's do this. I'm so <laughs> down. Let's play Let's play some werewolves. Uh, I'm so good. Uh, but yeah, no, I just, I don't know the rules. I don't know how the system works, um, but I'm definitely down to do like a one shot or a, you know, eight episode series. Happy to run it here. We can run it in somebody else's channel. I don't really care. And I'm just hoping if we do, we put a disclaimer on it that at least I myself will know none of the rules and have to be explained everything. So Disclaimer, hopefully, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I bought a DM. You can't be wrong if both of us are lost. <laughs> I bought a DM so that he could explain my rules. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it sounds like there's more than one of us that want to do it too. So maybe this spring, fall time. Actually, you know, it'd be a great time. This would be fun for like fall, middle, midwinter type stuff yeah, because then we could do thing. like, yeah, we could do a Halloween one. Uh, so yeah, figuring out the rules. Uh, but yeah, that sounds like fun. And playing with you, Ark, North, uh, North Wolf. Oh, that would be a, that'd be a hoot. Yeah, it'd be neat. I'm here for it. That'd be terrible. That'd be terrifying. That'd be great. <sighs> anyway, um, so here's a big one because I, I haven't asked this question. Normally, I ask these three questions very quickly, and, the, and we just went on a tangent because that's what happens when cats are put in a bag and. Uh, but it's out of the bag now. So let's let's talk this. Um, what? How old were you when you started? Sixteen, I think. I was in no, fifteen. And was it Dungeons and Dragons, or was it a different role playing game? It was Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. I started playing in high school when I discovered Critical Role. Uh, this was like this was a while like when they only had like 30-ish episodes i think nice maybe well i don't i don't know. i didn't actually find out critical role until season two so ah, i didn't yeah, know I anything about season, season one. one i was i got like caught up i was super into D, &D. still kind of am but now I, i'm like i do not have the time to watch all of these anymore oh, goodness i know uh but it was very it, it was it was back in high school i, I can say that for certain and it was D. &D. Nice. Um, how long did it take you before you picked up the GM mantle? Literally half a second after I asked, do you guys want to play D&D? &D? I immediately followed that statement with, I want to DM. Uh, not knowing how that worked. Uh, not knowing what that consists of? <laughs> yeah, I fully went off of just like, my, my entire game was just like, based off of what I had seen on Critical Role, I'm like, oh yeah, make an, athletic make an athletics check. I know what that is. 
or like make a make a strength roll or what have you and i would just make stuff up and they would like loot bodies and stuff and i didn't realize that like i'm the one who determines that so i just gave them the <laughs> weapon that the monster was holding and that's how one of my characters got like a weapon that did like 4d6 i'm like how did we get here like what is happening i could have swore i did this wrong and then like i threw like an abolith against them and i'm like okay cool like this is this should be fine they, yeah. they killed it immediately and i'm like all right i didn't realize 11 players all going at one after the other would uh destroy them that fast but okay yeah yeah once you start uh action economy is a thing in dungeons and dragons to a very and it's very badly uh represented because i feel that you have to really experiment to know what a real CR rating is compared to your players. I still don't know. It's been like nearly yeah. 10 years. I still have no idea what that is. Yeah, it's it's hit or miss in my opinion. Um, if you let your players base it off of like a video game where you're letting them long rest consistently, you need to never CR rate your character, your players at the level that they are. Like always two, three, four levels above. I mean, I remember play, playing level five character or having six level five characters, and I threw a level or I threw a CR nine at them, and they whopped the floor with it. And I was like, "Well, <laughs> that's not cool." They were supposed to run. I was like, "Run!" They're like, run, nah, please. just kill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. It's like, wow, okay, cool. That didn't <laughs> help me, or my evil campaign where my players decided to throw everything they can to tame a T Rex at level three and then used it as a mount across Tomb of Annihilation where they killed a Triceratops, skinned its head, put it, mounted that as a uh, a place to sit, and then our wizard threw fireballs off it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I was I'm like, where do we go? How did we get here? <laughs> <laughs> How did we get here? Somebody help. Yeah, it was like, because it was just... Because once again, it's the roles, right? Like people are going, oh, I have animal handling. I'm going to tame the T-Rex. And I was like, okay, natural 20. I'm like, well, I can't tell you. I could tell you no, but let's see what happens instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, I don't completely agree with that statement, but that's my own personal opinion. I get it. I don't always need to have a space for rules but i think rules definitely come in handy when you need them uh i don't believe no rule if i'm writing no rules at that point i'm just doing an improv comedy show yeah pretty much <laughs> i think that's just how that works uh in my opinion there are very dramatic improv shows but they're still improv completely um i actually we have a improv D show that is like 30 minutes south of us that i go to every other week it's great Nice. yeah they're they're a comedy skit they do it's crazy because it's like if you think about everything that you deal with as a gm now put personality to everything <laughs> so you have players playing players you have people other people playing npcs and other people playing monsters and you're the gm trying to tie all this together and they're all Jesus improv actors Christ. so it's you never know what could happen. Like we've had, uh, you know, we did they they did a Christmas show where one of the improv actors was uh, shoot uh, Krampus, and he improv convinced the party that he was the good guy, and our the GM who's sitting at the top of the booth just is going like this. He's just like, sure. <laughs> So they killed the they killed the town like speaker instead because they because Krampus convinced them that he was the bad guy. I'm just like okay, whatever. I mean, it is what it is. I feel like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, he played a really good Krampus though. Like, <laughs> I was like, dang. Like even I'm kind of okay with this. So <laughs> it was what it is. I was done. Um, anything because we're get, we're about to tie this up. Anything that you are currently working on that you can tell us uh i think everything that i'm working on i've mentioned already i also want to make sure that people go check this out do a redux uh well the most important thing that i do is uh twitch.tv slash hamasamakun that's my 
very much present stream. I stream like six, five to six days a week uh, at 6 p.m. EST, where your boy just sort of hangs out vibes, talks homebrew, occasionally talks memes, mostly talks memes. Uh, have And that's also where I've been working on Content Writers, which is my new actual play that involves the chat a lot more than regular actual plays, set in a world where monster fights are streamed directly to Twitch, quote unquote. Uh, and the direct support from the chat directly supports the content creator, or the content writer, the hero fighting these monsters. Or alternatively, you could donate to the monster and make them stronger. Um, outside of that, I have Tabletop Tempest. That <laughs> a little, little evil hands. Uh, outside of that, I have Tabletop Tempest. You can find the site right there. Uh, that is where I am working as one of the co-founders and editor for and director of art for uh, these games. Uh, a lot of them have to do with uh, these very personal immigrant stories, and as we sort of get into our second round of shows, whenever we get around to that, uh, we'll probably have uh, another theme, possibly, or a lot more interesting story elements. Uh, but so far, I think we are really uh, we're we're on our we're on our best. We started on our best foot. I don't know how that saying goes. We we have we have put forth our best. I think these are awesome. some of the best uh, stories that I have I've seen uh, awesome. thus far. Um, the other, the last thing I want to ask is, of course, what um, what is the what was the motive? You said the motive for Tabletop Tempest was for you to actually, you know, just tell the stories of your 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 childhood and things like in your life, correct? So that's that's really interesting because, like I said, I think a lot of times we. We want to kind of escape that, and I think this is a really cool opportunity instead to do that. You're just showing it another way. What my brain was actually going to ask on top of that was, <laughs> is this an actual play, or are these going to be like skits? Uh, these are actual plays. They okay. are pre-recorded uh, actual plays. One episode is actually filming right now, and uh, we had to we had to do some last-minute uh, hiring because I couldn't be on to run tech for that because I was here. Uh, oh my goodness! But, tell tell Chris and the gang, thank you. I'll get you over there here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, the, it's a bunch of pre-recorded episodes that have to do with. with uh, this, this wasn't even really intentional. Uh, like all of these different themes of like immigrant trauma uh, and what yeah. have you. Because I, I myself am not an immigrant. I'm a child of one, so I have a different experience than those who are immigrants, which is like, right. Uh, so I've been sort of telling a story that is authentic to myself uh, versus them who are telling stories authentic to themselves. Um, and what's interesting is this all started because I personally just wanted to, like, I was talking to, uh, like, the, I was talking to Chris at the time. And I was uh, telling them, like, oh, you know, I would just love, like, a group where I could just, like, tell all these stories that I know probably wouldn't go over well in other, like, mainstream audiences or, like, mainstream groups. Like, I would love to just be able to tell this, like, weird story that, like, I thought was really neat in concept. Uh, and they were like, oh, I, I feel the same. Like, there's, there are a lot of, like, stories that I want to tell that I don't, like, feel necessarily safe doing so in certain groups. So we made this, and we brought Jonathan on, and we just, it's been, like, this whole That's awesome. big thing. How many, how many people are you playing with? Uh, my group has five... Chris's has five, and Jonathan's has three. Awesome. Well, wish you the best of luck on all those shows and more. Can't wait to see what craziness is being built behind the scenes. Uh, do we? Can we at least get an idea of when it's coming out? Uh, well, we have something being, like, advertised, I guess, in, like, May. I, I don't know how much of information i'm actually allowed to give out and i i'm that person i'm the bad person because i want to give away all the information yeah i'm like so. i fear that like i will i will be like a, a, a fixed by retribution by chris <laughs> because they are the logistics person they have all of these things out I'm trying Got to give it. away as little information while still hyping this up but uh they we have a handful of things that are like in the works and we will get around to like awesome releasing them as they do so keep an eye out follow tabletop tempest all that uh, let me see here, because I know I have some time, and if you want to get Chris and Luis together, let me see what we've got for free tavern talks. I know I have one missing. Wow, my tavern talks got hooked up for the week that I didn't know. What just happened? That's always a good sign, like, when I didn't even sign them up, so... Great. Uh, let's see here. We're in April. Yeah. So uh, looks like I am booked up until the twenty sixth of June. So if any, if there, if you're interested in uh, popping in for that, 
Uh, let's uh, let's schedule Tabletop Tempest to come back as a full crew, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll find out more information. But I'll yeah, let same, you lead same. that so that you can reach out to us. I would highly recommend reaching out to Chris because okay. I'm not the scheduling person. <laughs> Chris and Jonathan, my apologies. I heard a different name. My brain is also jacked up, and it's that is ten o'clock. So, all right. Well, it is ten o'clock. The tavern is about to close down. Is there anything else you want to tell the audience before we head out? Um. Don't talk to cops. I don't know. Uh, follow... ah. <laughs> <laughs> I I got that from my from my Twitch stream. Somebody good. usually like hop off with uh, "Don't talk to cops." I'm like, all right. So that's just ingrained itself in my brain. Um, drink water. Follow me on Twitch. You can catch me every day, basically at 6 p.m. EST. A lot of you already do so. Uh, if any of you haven't, just saying, it's a pretty cool place where I've been talking about a lot of my content writer idea, a lot of other D and D and other TTRPG stuff, and you'll see Ark, if you're familiar with them, who's on basically every time, because uh, they're the only one who, who's, like, free to hang out while I'm doing that. Um, not to say that I don't absolutely love having them on and hanging out with me. Um, yeah, outside of that, look forward to Tabletop Tempest, Content Riders. Uh, When's the next, where's the next con you'll be at? Oh, the next con I'll be at should be Gen Con. Uh, Woo! I'll be hanging out. I'm trying to get some stuff 3D printed because nice. uh, Ark and I want to like dress up and stuff. So we will see if I can get any of my projects done by then or get a 3D design for that because either way it's going to be really neat. Nice. Are you guys doing 3D printing for Power Rangers? Uh, for content writers, actually. I just oh, finished ooh. design for the transformation like device. So I wanted to see about getting that designed and getting awesome. that like, 3D printed so that Ark and I could just run around the con just like uh, playing with the thing. That sounds great. Well, I will also be at Gen Con, so definitely we'll have to meet up, hang out, Hell maybe yeah. make a little bit of content while we're there. Um, until then, I'm I'm Tabletop Misfits. I am your game master, lore keeper, tavern keeper, whichever we want to call me. Um, I'm here every Wednesday night with a new guest. Uh, next week we have Podcast of the Manticore or Tales of the Manticore, a radio drama built TTRPG that is uh, pretty pretty intense. He was here a couple years ago, so we'll get to find out what he's been up to since. Oh, yeah. um, also, you can check me out tomorrow over on Twist, uh, Twisted Fates channel, uh, where we will be playing Candelaria Obscura, and then you can go pop over to Gen Con TV's main channel on Mondays, and you can see me there as we continue our story through Icewind Dale. Until then, hope you all have a wonderful week. Don't talk to dirty cops. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> dirty cops. <laughs>